everyone and welcome back to another Wreck This Journal entry. This time around, the next couple pages are going to be kind of on the simpler side, so I kind of wanted to add a secondary element to this. Uh, if we scroll through, what I said scroll as if this was a computer, oops. If we flip up to the first page that we have for today, this one is do some rubbings with a pencil, then scribble wildly, violently with reckless abandon, tear strips, rip it up, and I also wanted to do glue, staple, or tape these pages together. And I wanted to today use some either new or interesting art supplies that I have not used before on this channel uh, to create these today uh, so that we can get through a couple more pages and not do anything too crazy, still kind of fit the themes, uh, but also have a little bit fun of fun while we're doing it. The first page here, do some rubbings with a pencil. I'm gonna kind of make a minor adjustment to these to make them rubbings with a pen, or in this case, a highlighter pen. So I am actually going to use these really awesome friction pens and my son would like to be here to demonstrate for us. The thing that is really cool about these pens isn't so much the way that they write, it's what they do after the writing. As you can see here, I filled everything in. My son is really interested in my new nail polish. But if you rub really hard with the little plastic bit on the back, you can see that it completely erases. These are erasable markers. So I thought since I could get some really cool designs by rubbing off of these markers, I figured I would go in and I would draw a design with the colors and then rub in my image afterward. And the first thing that I thought of when I looked at these colors was reverse rainbow, which I know sounds so ridiculous. But I think that's pretty much exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to create the like basic shapes or like color of a rainbow shape deal. And then I'm going to go in with the rubby bits and rub in the full shape. So let's do that. All right, you can see here I've kind of created the shape of a rainbow with the clouds at the bottom. So now I'm gonna go in with the eraser and a rub in pretty much any, any old line art here, I suppose. I guess I think I'm gonna start with the, uh, the clouds. And there we have it, my rubbings page. I think it turned out really cool, actually. I like now that it's kind of dried a little bit, how it has a really kind of uh, matte texture almost. The only thing I don't love is how uh, neon the yellow is compared to the others. They're very much more pastel, I think. And maybe, the, maybe this one's a little bit on the brighter side too. Um, so I also feel like I need to put something down here and I don't know why a unicorn feels appropriate, but um, I don't know, maybe that's something to come back to. Maybe drop in the comments what you think I could add right below this rainbow or if maybe I need to put my pot of gold or whatever. Um, I'm not sure, but tell me what you think and tell me if you think you would ever try something like this in the future. For this page, I'm actually gonna set the book aside and talk to you a little bit about this weird product. I don't think it's totally weird. This is a pencil sharpener that sharpens at different, I guess, angles. Um, and I was really excited when I saw that something like this existed because I use golf pencils at my school. When I give my kids like tiny little pencils or when I save pencils for kids to use, they're often very small. And when you use a normal traditional pencil sharpener that sharpens like this, uh, it takes off a lot of the pencil. But when you use something a little bit smaller, you're normally able to get uh, a lot less, a lot less kind of cut off, but you're still able to get a point, which is why I think those pencil sharpeners or the the golf pencils kind of automatically have a very different like size as you can see here it looks a little bit more like this so I thought it would be fun to just kind of sharpen this up and compare the one maybe three and five uh, at sharpness so here is uh, the angle of number one blade in there sounds like it's doing its job there is number three which I actually like quite a lot and five, which I think would be the regular pencil sharpener. Absolutely, there we go. 
and then there's a closed option which nice for tiny fingers but I think I'm actually gonna maybe do it at two I think that might look good it would be a nice middle ground take off a little less obviously my pencils kind of having issues adapting from one angle to the other so here we go and I think that looks awesome very sharp actually I'm very impressed so that was my interesting little thing for here now back to the page so for this one I'm actually gonna return back to these pens so what I'm going to do is I have a couple of different circle shaped objects here and I'm going to make a sort of more like a symbolic sort of thing I guess and I want to kind of create circles where the scribbles are being contained and I want one of them to burst open and the scribbles to start moving into other directions and to start trying to pop the other bubbles on the page. Maybe it's against the rules a little bit, but I am gonna kind of clean up the edges around the bubbles so that the uh, bubble does its job and kind of keeps these scribbles contained. And it almost kind of looks like the thinner parts of the bubbles are the ones that broke, which, I don't know, feels kind of, I don't know, deep to me, I guess. I don't know the, the better way to put it. But I think I like that idea, and I think I'm going to thicken up some of the edges around here um, just to kind of continue with that. Maybe there, these are like different emotions or ideas or something uh, that... Uh, kind of can't thrive once they're locked inside their little bubbles, but uh, they become a little bit more wild and start opening up new doors once they finally are free to move. So let's just call this a conceptual art piece and move on to the next one. There's obviously no way that you all would know this, but this is actually the first video that I am filming in 2021. And I think something that would also be very therapeutic going off of the last page and then moving into this one is to instead of creating something on each of these individual lines to tear up and kind of make look independent, I thought it would be a more therapeutic idea. I don't know why I'm suddenly turning this into a therapy session, but uh, maybe writing down all the things that I personally want to let go of in 2021 after 2020 and tearing those up instead. First one I'm going to put down here is my fears of the future. And this is maybe kind of more of a personal thing, but I'm constantly worried about where I'm going to be next year. I want to buy a house. I want to, uh, you know, find the perfect job and the perfect house so that I can start a perfect life. And I know that that's obviously not something that's going to happen for me. Um, nothing ever goes perfectly. And I, I very much know that, but I'm still constantly worried about being able to make things work out the way that I want them to work out so desperately in my head and I think that's one of the things that I really need to let go of is just making sure that I am able to be happy with where I am at the moment and not worry so much about where I'm going to be coming up. The next thing is needing validation and this is again a very personal thing. Um, I constantly feel like you know, for me to show someone anything or to do anything, I need someone else to tell me that it's okay first. And obviously, that's not always true. I wrote my book by myself, and I kept it a secret for as long as I was writing it, really. Um, and then, it, once it became real, I really felt like I had to show people. I asked so many people to read it before I sent it out because I didn't want there to be any mistakes and I didn't want anything to be read the wrong way. And especially being here in this kind of YouTube space where I'm constantly putting my art and my ideas out onto the world, I think I need to get rid of the idea that I need people to think it's good in order for me to put it out there. The last thing is my bad attitude. I know it doesn't always seem like it, but I can kind of be a really negative person when I'm having a bad day. And I think I need to kind of deal with that a little bit better in a lot of different ways. Um, I feel like I'm always really positive when other people are feeling badly, but I don't really handle my own anger or emotions that well. Um, 
I kind of, I'm very much a deflector. I just kind of ignore them and, and then it kind of comes out in more negative ways and not so healthy ways. So I think if I were to get rid of my bad attitude about myself, about my art, about things that I can't control, then hopefully I will be a little bit happier. Now for the, uh, the real pleasure that is actually doing the ripping. There we go. And now I have let them go and we can move into 2021. Watch me struggle as I <laughs> try to turn this page here. And now the next page is blue stapler tape these pages together. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to use my last cool thing. Uh, and that is going to be this. And I'm sure you're like, what the heck is that? This is a stapleless staple, stapler. It is the coolest thing that I ever found on the internet and I'm like thrilled to use it. Um, and I'm gonna use it to staple these pages together because I thought that would be fun. <laughs> so I've got my ripped up page and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in and basically what it does is it like folds it, like it hole punches and then folds the paper up so that it can't be separated. So I'll show you right there. So you kind of can't see it perfectly, but it does kind of fold it back and then stick it in this little hole that it makes. You can see it probably better on the back. Uh, but it's actually like surprisingly strong and I will never have to buy staples again. So I'm going to just go all the way down and staple all of these sides. In fact, you know what sounds even better and even more symbolic is to cover these ideas up to completely. Tearing them up alone was not enough. I can do better. I can hide these things and let them go forever by never being able to see them again. I did kind of cut into this side, draw lines while in motion on the bus on the train while walking. It like perfectly avoided this O basically. So I think that's plenty easy for me to move on uh, in the next installment. But I think these four pages and these uh, three cool little gadgets were enough for me today. So <laughs> thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw here, don't forget to like and subscribe. I do put out new videos every Sunday at noon Eastern Standard Time, and sometimes I'll put out a bonus video on Wednesdays. Thanks again so, so much, and hopefully I will be seeing you in the next one. Bye!